Hey guys and welcome to this Train Team TV video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Just Trains Nottingham to Lincoln route, which is an extension for the Midland Mainline route. As it's one of our showcase videos, remember it is not a review. We've been involved with this product, so we can't review it at all. Uh, and if you want to see a review of it, obviously look elsewhere. This will merely be a showcase of the route and some of the features and tell you about what's gone into the overall product uh, as a whole from our team. So we're starting off here at Lincoln. I'm going to unpause the game. We'll take a good look around um, and then we'll have a drive from here at Lincoln Central right through to Newark and Nottingham. So we'll unpause the game now. First thing we need to do is set our cab up and open the doors and then we'll take a look around the station. So let's get that underway now. This is ages since I've driven a train in TS. It's like a good couple of months, so anything could happen. I'm just trying to remember how to actually start the train up at the minute. So we've got the headlights on. There we go. So let's open the doors. And whilst we do that, we will set up the GSMR radio whilst that's powering up. We are working to uh, Lima 60. And this is the 1036 from Lincoln to Leicester. Which of course, as Darby Nottingham Leicester is a requirement, you can drive all the way through to Leicester. Uh, and this scenario gives you that opportunity. It's uh, about a one hour 50 scenario, I think, uh, in total. So it's a decent length run. So we get all set up here. The doors are already ready to close, so we should be underway in a second, but we'll pause and we'll take a look around the city. Because I know you probably want to see that. So before we do set off, this is uh, the city of Lincoln. Some of the Tom's been working on quite hard to actually try and pull off. The station itself has been made by Benedict. It's uh, his first major one since he joined the team back in June. And uh, hopefully he'll agree he's done a great job on that. Uh, he's uh, certainly put a lot of time into it. So yeah, this is Lincoln Central. It's a five platform station. There's two platforms down the far side, bay platforms, and then you've got these three main platforms. Lincoln, of course, is quite an important junction. Um, you've got the lines just outside there at Pelham Street. The line on the left takes you towards uh, Barnet B and Dimmingham, eventually. And the line on the right takes you to Peterborough. Whilst in this direction, you can go on to Doncaster and you can also take the route which we'll take, which is to turn left to Newark and Nottingham and beyond. So you can see obviously up there we've got the castle, we've got Lincoln Cathedral. All the things you'd expect to be up there. There's also other things like the bus station and all that. So we tried to really capture the feeling of being in the city. And you'll see as we leave the Mavina and everything, it's quite uh, been quite a lot of work to get that, you know, to achieve properly. That sentence made no sense. But then a lot of mine don't. Um, down here you've got Pelham Street siding. So this is the very end of the route. And they're just very basic bits down here so that you can... Um, Start scenarios down here and stuff like that if you want. I mean, this bit down here, Pelham Street, uh, is based in 2018, as is the whole route. So it's before they modified it for Azumas, and it's when the scrap trains were still able to access that siding. So that's what's going on there. Anyway, let's crack on and uh, depart from Nottingham, from Lincoln. We're not at Nottingham. We're going to Nottingham. So this video will show you the section through here from Lincoln through to Nottingham. And we'll be calling at Highcomb, Swinderby, Collingham, Newark Castle and Nottingham. This service doesn't stop at most of the stations. Uh, it stops at the ones between here and Newark and then it obviously doesn't stop at the ones beyond that point. It'll stop next stop, um, Nottingham. Just turn the speakers up so you can actually hear the game a bit. And whilst we're leaving here I'll uh, show you some of the outside view. So this was quite a bit that we tried to capture quite a lot, is the sort of claustrophobic feel down here as you come past these car parks and all the various sort of unique buildings that you get as you leave Lincoln. It certainly has its own feel to it and this is my own personal look of the route. As you come across there, across the marina, the River Whittam I think this one is. And that trails out of the city. So we can have a little look around here. You've got all sorts of things going on. We've got the new level crossings in as well. So these have got like the two kind uh, of There will have been a break in the recording just there. 
because I had to go and deal with a dog that was crying downstairs, which you could just about hear on the recording, I'm sure. So we're talking about level crossings. This is one of the new varieties. We've got quite a few different varieties that we've had made, uh, and I'm sure they'll get developed further as we go along through time, but these are certainly uh, to replace the older ones that we had, which were, I want to say, at least 12 years old. There's a lot more detail on these, certainly, than there was on the older ones. Um, and just generally better models than what we had previously. Because the other thing about the older ones is we didn't have a lot of the varieties that we needed. And because there is a lot of level crossings on this route, whilst we could have still used the old ones in theory, you know, it was better to actually make some newer ones and uh, make most of them. I think pretty much all of them are the correct style. There'll be the odd one that isn't because you simply can't make every single level crossing when there's about 36 crossings on the route, but uh, pretty much every one you should see is the right style. So this is the marina that I was talking about. So this is where Benedict, Callum, Tom, they all came together on this section and made quite a lot of bits to actually give it the sort of feel. Try not to go too over the top, so it's obviously you're not going to see the same detail on those buildings as you would on the ones directly next to the track, because at the end of the day, it's a very intense area for the game to deal with because there's so much sort of going on. Uh, to try and capture this area there is no way you could make this look correct without uh, an awful lot of custom stuff being made so that's what we've had to do we've had to make a lot of buildings to give it the sort of feel that we wanted it to have i mean from the cab view certainly you should get the correct feel if you go flying around and stuff you'll find that the buildings as i say on the other side of the marina aren't quite as high detail but uh, that's all part of the uh, intentional stuff so we're now leaving Lincoln here on the four track short section here from uh, East Holmes Junction which we just passed and we're now on the West Holmes down fast towards, uh, the game's down fast towards West Holmes Junction. Both sides of the line here, they are all university buildings so you got uni accommodation, you got the university sports centre up there on the left as well. Now I'm going to spend uh, quite a lot of time in this video flying around because the 156 is not the best train for looking from the cab view so I'll probably spend a lot of time in this view above the train just so that you get a better view so that is as I say the sports centre on the left there with the football pictures and everything as we then prepare to turn left here at uh, West Holmes Junction so at West Holmes Junction we'll be turning left and we'll be heading off towards Nottingham and on, on the way first to Newark and our first stop will be Highcombe which is about another two miles or so so Lincoln is on a triangle as well there's a triangle here of lines so on the right in just a second you'll see the line drawing from uh, Pyweb Junction at the top and I'll show you on the map what that looks like so you can see you've got Pyweb Junction there and they can jump, come down both from curve to join this line, so you can come from Doncaster in real life, obviously in straight round right way through Lincoln. Now this was an interesting bit of airway in real life, I actually believe this was a deviation uh, and that's why there's a sort of weird sort of S-shaped curve because the old station used to be in the centre of Lincoln uh, I think it was Lincoln St Mark's there was another station in Lincoln, I think it was the Great Northern one or whatever, I can't remember, my railway history in Lincoln isn't great um, and then there was a deviation went into Lincoln this way to access Lincoln Central. So as we now head around this curve, this is probably the sharpest curve we've actually had in one of our routes since it's been super elevated properly. I know in the past we've often had questions, is the route super elevated? Well, here's the proof that this one is. And hopefully, you will agree, the transition out of the curve is now much smoother than it has been in the past. And that, a lot of it, is thanks to Sean Gregory, um, who has actually helped out with tweaking our track rule quite a bit. So you'll see there, there was no bounce or anything as you came out of the curve, like I know people have often critiqued in the uh, past. And that's uh, with grateful thanks to Sean for that. He's uh, done a good job of modding the track uh, rule to actually achieve that. Uh, not to say there won't be further tweaks in the future to that as well. This was one of my favourite scenes that Tom made. So you got the bridges and everything, you got the road crossing there with some new traffic lights that uh, were made just to this scene. 
uh, and obviously for future use as well. But then as you, as you come along all this section, you do have the uh, cathedral in the background. It dominates the entire skyline for miles and miles. Just trying to adjust the game sound so that uh, the balancing is a bit better. So we soon move away from Lincoln, we're heading out into the suburbs now, we're coming towards Highcombe. Not much to see on this little bit, so we'll get back in the cab. So the route, in terms of its length, it's a 36 mile add-on to the um, Darby Nottingham Leicester and Sheffield Darby routes. Those are the two requirements, you don't need the Awash Valley and you don't need the Derwent Valley. Although there is a scenario which you can run through the Derwent Valley if you want, included with the route. So for those that don't own the Midland Mainline family of routes, to play this route as an add-on, it will be coming out standalone as well in the future. But for those that want to run this route and run the other parts of the MML family, you first need to buy Sheffield to Derby, and then you need to, need to, you need to own Derby, Nottingham, Leicester, and then you can buy this one as the extra add-on there. It won't work if you don't already have Derby, Nottingham, Leicester. If you just want this route and you don't want the other two, you can just buy it as a standalone. That'll release a couple of weeks after the standalone, uh, the original extension route comes out. So this route will come out first, the one with all the rest of the Midland Main Line, and then the uh, additional one will come out as well, the standalone route. So we're just pulling in now to Highcombe. This is our first stop on this journey. So again, everything that you see has been tried to be created as authentic to 2018 as it can. That's the reason why you don't have the footbridge over the edge of the marina at Lincoln, for instance. We're trying to create it as much as we can, sort of summer-ish 2018, because that's when the original MML route was essentially based. So everything's still EMT, it's not EMR, because we didn't want, you know, as far as possible, we don't want to be cross-generation, you know, sort of routes. We want all the routes to be set in the EMT period so that they're all consistent. So that is the Linden building that you've got up there. That's sort of a uh, interesting landmark in the area. Very strange building. It's a very big building as well, but it's a, certainly a weird looking one. And again, you can still see the Minster and the Minster, the Cathedral in the background. Um, so this is uh, certainly one of the more interesting bits. What's going on there? Don't know why I didn't know what the door sound was then. I'm trying to concentrate on about eight different things at once. So when I leave from Highcombe, next stop will be Swinderby, where we've actually got a few semaphore signals and whatnot. A slightly different look there. Interesting that the only place they've actually got semaphores left on the route in real life. The semaphores were taken out. Uh, it's like we win the last five years ago, they took all the semaphores out from this route. Uh, prior to that, it was all semaphore throughout. The signalling on this section is still mostly bulb, so it's two aspect bulb signals, repeaters and then red slash green ones, as you've just seen there. And then there's also a mix of LEDs on this end of the route, because Lincoln was modified 2007, they got rid of the semaphores in Lincoln, so this section's LED slash bulb and semaphore at Swinderby. Once you get beyond Newark, it was all uh, modified in the last sort of five years, so it's all um, ILS signals down there. And we've had some new models made, and we've also made some mods to the bulbs and stuff, so they actually show a lot further away. They don't just show at 0.4 miles, which is something that's been happening in the last couple of years to the JT signals. They've not been showing far enough away. With the newer ILS ones, you'll notice they show a lot further away, and then the plan is, hopefully, to roll that update out individually, signal by signal, to the rest of the signals in the library, but uh, I'm told by Will, who's the man in the know with this thing, that it's not a quick job, so... Um, don't expect it straight away, is what I've been told. 
but hopefully it'll give you the new ILS uh, signals are a lot easier to see than the uh, older ones that we had. So we're now coming along this all like a nature reserve down this section uh, as we head along this part of the route. And it's a three mile sprint down to Swindaby where we'll make our next stop. That'll be in about two or three minutes time. This section of the route is 70 mile an hour. Most of it's about 60 miles an hour. There is a section of 50 from Swindaby to Newark. Not quite sure why it's 50 for the entire section when it's just the same as this, but it is. Um, But yeah, 70 mile an hour on this bit. And this is the fastest section of the route. Obviously not counting the bit at Newark, but that's not really part of this route. You do of course get uh, Newark Northgate included. And we'll take a little sprint down there to have a look at that when we get to Newark Castle. I think Newark's probably my... Newark and Lincoln are my two favourite parts of this route. There's quite a lot of different things we did and uh, details we've added. You'll just see on the track every so often you'll see the uh, tree doors for the crossings are actually placed and the uh, crossings themselves as mile posts including the quarter mile posts which we've done for the first time and then there's other little features such as the uh, signal board, uh, the crossing board over there on the right which wanted to try and ramp up the line side detail a little bit, some of the you know, cable troughing was looking very old, so we improved a lot of that. Made a couple of new varieties of that. And just tried to generally improve some of the bits that we can. And overall, just focus on giving as much detail as possible. And at the same time, whilst not going over the top, as you see the scenery around here is you know pretty basic but there's nothing spectacular going on outside of the cab most of the tiles I think have less than a thousand certainly the ones that I've worked on in the rural parts have got less than a thousand um, I know Tom has been roughly the same sort of uh, deal so we're now getting ready to approach Swindaby about a mile out So at the start of the straight there we would have just passed the distance signal first window but you didn't see it because I was faffing about talking and not looking. We've modified our distance signals, the colour light ones, the uh, two aspect repeater signals so that when you're approaching we're in a new version of it so it won't alter the operation of any else already placed but the new version that we've made instead of when you've been in semaphore routes of just trains in the past that don't respond properly with semaphore signals so with ours now, it will give you a yellow aspect even if the starter signal is at red. Instead of just looking at this first signal, it will look at both signals. And I'm going to go straight through it, I think. Because I'm too busy talking. We'll go straight into emergency. Be right. So yeah, these are the new semaphore signals. These have been made by Will. One of the mile posts there, as I said, that Benedict has made as well. And... Uh, just to try and give the route that little bit of extra detail compared to what we've had in the past, such as with Cornish Mainline, where we didn't really have some of the finer details with the uh, semaphore signalling. Just ignore the hood. Nothing's going on at all on the hood there. Uh, all perfectly normal. It's, there's just the sort of things that happen when you're arriving at a station sometimes, you know, when, you, when you're too busy chatting bull and you don't look at where you're going. So Tom's been trying to actually put quite a lot of detail into these along with Will who made the semaphores and the cables and stuff like that so we've actually tried to recreate the pulleys and everything uh, and these signals do animate as well when you pass them and whatnot the the bottom pull you know pulls down and goes up we haven't got any sounds on them at the moment we're hoping we can add them in due course we just wanted to actually get the some of the newer finer details sort of done so like uh, with the wires and and whatnot just to try and give it that little bit of detail. I don't know what's going on. We're still stood still at the moment. At least we're not showcasing professional driving. Why would anybody do that? I haven't got time to go back and record the entire video because I went straight through. I made no apology. Sorry, Benedict. 
Why well, I did just make an apology. So this, so this is Swinderby. This is a simple two platform station. As I said, you got the signal box, obviously because you got semaphores, so you need a signal box. And that's this one here. Now the cables don't go into anything, they just go into the box, but should add a little bit of immersion anyway to uh, have that feature rather than just cable the semaphores lying around. We'll go down to this crossing here to watch the departure. We did try and uh, recreate the sort of interesting semaphore that's down here from the research trip that we went on. Uh, this one is more like a lamp post than an actual original post semaphore. It's a really weird sort of look to it. Having an absolute mare of a time here. But yeah, myself and Benedict actually came down to this crossing to have a look at the semaphores and stuff, and we noticed that one's got a really weird look to it. We did actually record the sounds of that one as well, so maybe that one will definitely get some sort of sounds. Unfortunately, this one wasn't uh, used in the time that we had available. The main thing was to make sure the semaphores are, are a reasonable model and you know give the right feel, rather than just using, dare I swear, and say Kuju or something daft like that. That certainly won't be acceptable. So with the crossings, as I say, you get a few different varieties. You have got the half barrier one there, which we've seen already. There's a single full skirted barrier, there is a double skirted barrier, there is a double wide skirted barrier. Uh, there's a half barrier with a concrete post which we'll see at the next stop and that is Collingham. And that'll be in around 5 minutes, 3 or 4 minutes time. Depending on whether I remember to stop at it or not. I remember 2 minutes if I don't remember to stop. In terms of pricing, there'll be two options. There will be the standalone version of the route which will be slightly more expensive I believe that's going to be 19.99 and then there'll be also obviously the add-on version of the route which I'm just confirming what the price of that is and that is 15.99 so the add-on version of the route which is this one I'm driving will be 15.99 and the standalone will be 19.99 and with that you'll get 36 miles of route Give or take a mile or two, I think it's, I think it's maybe even maybe actually closer to 37. It's quite a tricky one to add up because you've got the bit to New at Northgate and you've also got the bit to Extra Junction in there as well. It's around 34 miles direct from Lincoln to Newark, I believe. And you'll get 15 scenarios that are used, such as arms from power stock, such as this one, which uses the AP class 156. And then you'll get 12 scenarios, which are clones of the originals, and they will use just the European loco and asset pack which obviously is a requirement of the route sack is just a everybody gets a scenario that they can play even if you've got very little stock but we really do uh, encourage people to you know buy some of the Armstrong power off stuff and, and things like that because the the add-ons are certainly worth grabbing and uh, bring a route such as this one to life when you've got the correct trains running on it as they do with uh, pretty much every route out there so you can already see on the far left of the screen, of, oh, I can't see because of the stupid windscreen. In the middle of the screen now, the, that is the British Sugar Factory at uh, Newark, which is just coming into view. And we're still a good five miles away from that, so short, sort of tell how far that's been visible for. Uh, and that was the one thing that we wanted to make sure was achieved, was that because the view is so rural and flat you see things from miles away you notice when we're doing the research that you know you see the British Sugar Factory you see Lincoln Cathedral from miles and miles away literally you know 10 or 15 miles TS can't quite do 10 or 15 miles but it can do you know between 5 and 7 so that's what we've gone with there so you get the, uh, the British Sugar Factory appearing a nice long distance away from the uh, from the track. Just make sure I try and actually stop here. We're going full step three because again I wasn't really concentrating. Probably trying to talk and do a video at the same time, it's never easy. 
Especially when you've not been practicing. I'm just going to keep making excuses. So this is Collingwood Station. This is the first station that we come across that's been made by Callum. Again, this does show, as I said, the concrete version of our half barrier crossing. So these give you the uh, the different varieties. We want to try and make sure that we did as many of these as we could. And it's not to say that more won't be done in future. It's a case of getting the the uh, mount that needs to be made for this route, obviously, created. But it certainly gives us a good base to start from. Now I said this was Callum's. This, this was Benedict's, actually, thinking about it. Collingham was Benedict's. I knew that one of them was swapped around, but it was, it was Rolleston that got swapped around. Sorry, Benedict just ruined Benedict's day there. The first station we'll come to of Callum's will be Newark Castle, which is our next one in five miles. And we'll also take a look at Newark Northgate while we're down there, for those that want to uh, see that. There are scenarios that take you down to Newark Northgate as well. We wanted to make sure that that obviously gave you the full sort of uh, appeal of the route. It wasn't just dumped there or not done properly. It's been done in the same spirit as every other station on the route. It's not been half buffered, half. Uh, bothered with. I nearly said the bad words, but be right. So again, we've made other new bits for crossings as well. We've made quite a lot of new foot crossings. And uh, farm crossings and gates and signs and just to try and give it that country railway feel rather than keep using the same old stuff that we've used on older routes in the past. You know, we needed to actually uh, use some of the newer stuff or make some newer stuff and some improvements because a lot of the crossing stuff that we did have including foot crossings was uh, dated, it was until Swex so we hadn't really been making any new bits. We have got new crossing padding and stuff as well but again that's obviously can be added to on in due time as well. So this is the last uh, long straight before Newark Castle. And when we get to Newark Castle, we'll make another short stop there. As it's based in 2018 from Newark Castle, obviously, you can do the scenarios where you get the Newark Castle to Matlox. And uh, that's probably my favourite long run to do on the EMMR at the moment is that one. Because you go so, sort of from the flat countryside of this bit around uh, Newark Castle. Go through the city of Nottingham, then you've got to go through Derby as well. And then you go, it totally changes, it goes more hilly and in the valley around Matlock and everything, it's a, a real contrasting journey. One I've not actually made in real life in full, which uh, I probably ought to do. It would be enjoy enjoyable to do it. Done it all in sections, but never in one go. Now you can also see the uh, church in Lincoln and uh, Newark on the left hand side. Just coming into view. Again, that's something we wanted to make sure you could see from a long way out. And we've got another train coming towards us. That one will be a uh, Leicester Lincoln. So if you've got a, if you're on a Leicester Lincoln going that way, you'll find that 2R63 follows a Newark to Lincoln service, so you sort of get held and stuff. And because of the long sections between signals, you do find quite often that you get held at signals on this bit. So it's quite a uh, quite an interesting drive when you're following stuff. Certainly get held for quite a bit. So this is the bit, as I said, this bit's 50 miles an hour. This is the slower section of the route, and then we'll go back to 60 after Newark. Uh, you do have to slow down quite a bit through Newark because it's on a sharp curve. 
that's not super elevated either uh, as per real life. It's a 30 mile an hour curve. And the, you've obviously also got the foot crossing, uh, the flat crossing coming up in just a couple of miles as well. A lot of these crossing houses were made as well because there's some really unique sort of weird little buildings. This being one of them, there's quite a lot of them. This is one of the ones that hasn't got any garden. I've probably got, I, I suspect this one's one of the ones that's not even lived in these days. Uh, most of them are turned into private residences. We tried to make as many as we could to give it sort of the right feel and as it should be. We're about to go into the A1 motorway. That goes over the top there, heading from Doncaster on the right and Grantham on the left. Next signal that we passed will be the one that protects the flat crossing. Now you'll see on the hood there's two extra signals between the 30 board and us. It's two very close together. Those aren't actually visible to us. They're AI signals which are invisible. Now the reason they're there is so that you can uh, do your scenarios where you stop at the flat crossing and wait for AI to pass. You can put a blocker in and uh, the other side of the crossing and uh, make it so you get held while stuff goes past on the east coast and uh, that's how we managed to achieve that I'm hoping to see some uh, interesting scenarios with that where people were able to achieve some pretty cool stuff especially going in the other direction because you can't really see the flat crossing very much from this signal but the one at the other side you can really see it from so you've got an upside down signal on the right over there it's an interesting one and that's for reversals coming out of Newark that want to go back towards Nottingham because it's only a triangle towards Lincoln so that's where you turn left if you're going into Newark Northgate now I'll pause it in a second just as we've gone over the crossing now it is a, a little bit laggy on this bit because you're loading in so much around Newark and you'll see when we get to Newark Castle exactly why so let's have a pause here. We'll go and have a look down at Newark uh, Northgate. That is the flat crossing that we've uh, put in. 100 mile an hour on the east coast and then it's uh, 50 in this on, on our line. And then you've obviously got the curve that comes round. The OHLA is newly been developed uh, by Benedict there. So we don't have to use the old stuff that we had. Uh, just uh, adds a little bit of flavour there. Just to make sure it's uh, not the old stuff that was getting used. So this is going into Newark Northgate Station. You've got the car park on the right, and then obviously you've got the station itself. This station was made by Will, so this was the main one that he made on this route. And uh, again, it's in the sort of 2018 era. Free platform station, pretty basic really. My personal favourite little sort of view on this station was this one. Uh, when I was watching some LNER HSTs and stuff going through, when you get the the um, awnings and everything on it, I just feel that's a really nice view. But it's a pretty basic station. I know Alex at JT doesn't like the real one, he thinks it's ugly for whatever reason. I, I don't know, I quite like it, personally. Went and did the research there back in June this year, just after all the lockdowns had finished. Just actually, I'm pausing the game slightly there because it's not loaded everything in just yet. Because we're such a long way off, there we are. Now it's loaded everything in. Once again, ignore the hood whilst I'm making an absolute pig's ear of the driving. I'll just pause it again. But yeah, that's new at Northgate. The scenery does carry on a little bit down there. stops just past the bridge. The track itself goes on quite a long way. And uh, the reason it does that is to make sure that your trains can get... Say you've got AI and you want it to go through 100. We made it so that you can lay... there's enough track laid that they'll go through at 100. Uh, they won't go through at like 25 or something daft. That was one of the things we wanted to ensure. And some of the newer actually... We had some new terraced houses made as well. They're sort of medium detail to make sure that we don't have to use the Kuju ones everywhere. Because the obviously we use the Kuju terrace houses quite a lot on the route in the past. Mm. 
So we're going on the A46 road here, and then we'll be going into Newark Castle Station. And this one's Callum Station. Feel so bad for getting that wrong, but I get a lot of things on, so let's not just uh, think it with that bit. A very short platform in Newcastle. Once I've stopped to have a good fly around and show you all the uh, various bits that have been done at Newark, there's quite a lot of work going into it, I know, from uh, Tom and Callum. So yeah, this is the station in Newark. It's a very simple two-platform station, but then it's got the crazy sort of building on the right there. Uh, the carriages restaurant in there now. That's the original station building. It's a really unusual sort of look to it. It's a very sort of unique looking building. And then you've got the Sherwood Council buildings there. That was done by Nitin Singh, who's done quite a lot of assets on the view as well. But that dominates the entire view. It's quite a new building. It don't dominates the whole view. And uh, this is my favourite bit. All the little tykes, cars and stuff that have been put down in the uh, nursery bit. So again, another different variation of the crossing. This is the wider barriered one without the toucans on, uh, as is there in real life at Newark Castle. And then, of course, you couldn't make Newark Castle Station without making Newark Castle. So, uh, well, what's left of it, there is Newark Castle. Uh, centre of town is not too highly detailed, you know, we're not going over the top down there and making anything silly, we just place the buildings and whatnot that needed. The church itself had to be made because it dominates the whole skyline for miles and miles around. And then it was a case of just doing the stuff near the uh, near the track, really. Anyway, let's uh, get the game unpaused. And we'll watch this one leave from the station, I think. And something new, different we have had done is these little bars that Callum made, the... Uh, passenger information display. We didn't put a time on it because obviously if you put start putting times on the left hand side there it becomes uh, less immersive because it's like if it's at 11 o'clock or something and it were like 6 o'clock at evening it wouldn't be right. Uh, on that side we've actually put that one closed off just to give it a little bit of a difference I suppose and you'll find those at um, you will find those screens at uh, Lincoln as well, a different variety of them. So we're now leaving Link uh, Lincoln. No, we're not we're leaving Newark Castle. I was going to say we're leaving Lincolnshire, but I'm not sure if we are in going to Nottinghamshire this year. I don't think we are. Oh, we're in Nottinghamshire. That's a geographic question for anybody in the comments that can tell me where I am when I said that. Because I haven't got a clue. I also haven't got a clue about how I'm driving, but then that's not new. So instead of the train down. There's a little bit of fertility limit here because there's a uh, small restriction. It's a permanent speed restriction that's just on a short bit of track. And then it goes back up to 60 and it'll then remain 60 all the way through. Quite a lot of stations on this section. We're not stopping at any of them. But there's quite a lot of stations nonetheless. And one of the old NRN boards that's remaining there. Even though they're completely defunct these days, it's just still there.
So we're now heading along the straight towards Stayfort. Stayfort being the first little place that we'll go through. That's a, a crossing and there's the site of the power station as well at Stayfort. There's also a uh, sort of viaduct that we go over where we cross the River Trent. The main thing around here really is the power lines. There's literally hundreds of power lines that are everywhere. So from here it's 16 miles to Nottingham. 23 minutes it's given to take us, uh, taking us to get there. So the power station's over there on the uh, far left hand side. And then you've got the sugar factory behind us now. Quite away from, Link uh, from Nottingham. Newark. Why, why did I say Nottingham? It's quite, it is quite away from Nottingham, actually. It's nearly 17 miles, I suppose, and it's even further from Lincoln, so... You know, I wasn't wrong when I said it was quite a long way. That is Stayfort Viaduct that they just crossed over there. So that's the River Trent that we uh, passed over. And this is where I was on about with the power line. They're literally everywhere. Because there's a national grid site here and stuff, and they've got all sorts of substations going on. There used to be a lot of sidings here as well. So you'll see on the right hand side, there's a bit of cleared land just behind this first line of bushes. You can see it there now. Uh, and there used to be sidings all around here. And just in a second, we'll pass in Stay Fort crossing box. As with all the crossing boxes on this section it's shut, no longer open sadly uh, and each one has been recreated as closely as we can to the 2018 spec. So this one for instance is without its uh, steps. I think a car went through the barriers then but we'll pretend it hasn't. So you've got the 2018 spec of the uh, each one of these boxes. So we've got Rolleston coming up in a minute which is a little tiny cabin box. And uh, we'll go through Rolleston Station as well. So whilst we're going along this section, why not fly down to Rolleston? You have got uh, Southwell Race Course as well. That's there on the right-hand side. Very basic model, but it gives it the, the look. Obviously, you can't see it at all from the trains. There's no point going over the top uh, yeah, with that. And this is Rolleston Station. Slight bit of race platform on that size. And that will be a Newark Castle service. That will be from Matlock, I would have thought. So I'm not going to pause it whilst we're going through here, but I'll just have a little look around. You've got the station approach and everything. And then, as I said, you've got the little box up here. So the Volaston Gate box, Volaston Crossing. And almost immediately you go straight into Fiskerton Station, which is the next one. They're literally less than a mile apart. And I suspect the only reason the other one's there is for the races. Now the most sort of weird feature about Fis Fiskerton Station is this. The box. We noticed, me and Tom, when we went on the uh, research trip, we noticed that it's literally falling over. So we took quite a few pictures and then you can see at the front they've actually got sort of things supporting the box. So we noticed that when we went on our research trips that it was literally falling down. Um, and it's got like new steps that are sort of flat but the door and everything is not and really weird little box. And uh, one of these days if it's not knocked down it'll probably fall down. And uh, you've got the station house and everything at Fiskerton as well. So there's a short gap again between stations. Next one that we go through will be Bleasby. You've got Fiskerton Junction box coming up in a second. As with all of them, the, the, this one's closed. And uh, once again, you've got the, seat, the crossings and stuff. And one thing I will show at the crossings is some of the other details that we've added in um, as a part of the whole crossing sort of idea. Just trying to give them a little bit more life than they had before. 
certainly in previous JT routes that were very bland. So on this route we've got the object detectors. Now these are something that Calm's made. We noticed these at the crossings that we went to along the entire you know, section of this route between Newark and um, Nottingham. There don't seem to be as many on the Lincoln section but they are on this section. So you've got these reflectors and the uh, general object detectors and stuff. Particularly I love these little cool R2-D2 style looking things. They're pretty uh, impressive. But yeah, that's Fiskerton Junction Box. There obviously used to be a junction. I believe used to go in that direction. I know it went somewhere over there. I and mean, that's the actual line there. Um, another part of the upgrade was these REB cabins, which come as a bit of a kit. You can put the the air con bits and the little top on there as well, so you can just have it as a blind box as well. So it's uh, useful for multiple locations. Most of this stuff's gone in the common library as well, because obviously it can be used in other routes. I'm just going to put a bit of power on because we're dropping a bit of speed there. As you can see, as I was on about with the signals, you can now see them so much further away. And we've got some newer ILS varieties as well. Uh, and there are actually some new ILS models, but I'm not sure which ones. But that's the older one. So there is some of the older ILS models and then there's some of the newer ones. Obviously where we're needing to make new signals, we're making new better models. As you would expect. So you can just about see Blazeby Station coming into view. That was the distant signal for Blazeby that we just passed. Again, we're not stopping at any of these stations on this section. This is where you start to come out of the flats or plains and stuff. You start to see a bit more of a hill on the right hand side. Uh, as we're entering the edge of the top Trent Valley and you'll see that that follows us all the way along. Marking out the edge of the valley and they say again further away but on the other side. Very much in the uh, river valley. As flat as it is at this point. So this is Bleasby. This uh, has got a station house that's completely disused. So it's all overgrown in there. There's nothing going on in there. And then you've got Bleasby station. Quite a few of these have got split platforms. So that's uh, the platform towards Lincoln and this one with its long sort of footway is the platform towards Nottingham. Each one has SDO boards and stuff like that. You've got a 7.5 car stop, you've got the old 3 car stop which I noticed was really worn out. And then you've got the SDO 2 as well. So again we'll go through another station and in a second we'll go through Ferguson station. All of these are so close together that you, you literally, if you're doing the stopping services, you're constantly on your toes because you're starting and stopping. Total of 14 new stations on the route as well. So if you're doing this service right through to Leicester, obviously you see quite a lot of different places that you go through. So this one's Ferguson, you've got the similar sort of layout here and you've got the uh, very pretty looking station building. I loved this one when we visited. It had a real sort of country, you know, feel to it. Really out in the middle of nowhere. In fact the route in general is sort of very uh, rural throughout. And again, a very basic station. Next up, we'll go through Loudon, which is the biggest set, the biggest station on this section of the route. It's quite a, a big sort of site. Got the signal box there in its original location before they moved it behind the platform to the uh, there's a little heritage site open there where you can go and visit the signal box, I believe.
So I'll fly us down to Loudon whilst that's uh, tootling along the straight. Got the old uh, loop that's still left in there as well. It's sort of hidden by trees these days, but it's still in there. Got an access road down this side. Mm, you got Loudham Station. This one has a. <laughs> I love the little sign here. It's actually like that when we went. So we uh, we thought that would just be something cool to uh, add in. Something different. Uh, you got an old wagon body behind the station there as well. And that's where the box has now moved to. You'll see in a second in this era, 2018, it was still in its original spot, which is behind us. So in this era, the box was still there in its original location. As we now head along towards Burton Joyce, which will be the next station that we go through. Got another one of the little crossings on this section. So you got Gonalston Crossing, uh, which is. Oh, that might be the one before. There's a few different ones, and they've all got different names, and I can't remember exactly which one's which. Gonalston, I think, is the one previous to this. But there are certainly quite a lot of them. These little crossings in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we counted about 36 or 37 different ones. in the cabaret for Burton Joyce which is just at the end of this straight so we're now six miles from Nottingham so we'll go through Burton Joyce then we'll go through Carlton and then finally past Nevillefield Junction into Nottingham itself There's a little crossing here called Trent Lane, which had a really charming little sort of house there that we uh, got Benedict to uh, make for us. And one of the many foot crossings, and then you've got uh, the station at Burton Joyce. Which was again, the, as with all the stations on this route, we found them to be very sort of peaceful and pleasant to sort of spend a bit of time on. We did a visit on a nice summer's day as well, so. We were very chilled out. In Burton Drive, you've got these interesting things down the back of the platform as well, which I assume held some sort of cables. Noticed them when we did the research trip and thought that they'd be quite a cool little thing to add in. And uh, a little different features are put in the boot. So uh, we got those made. Along with new cable cabinets, sorry, not cables. So we got new line side cabinets as well to replace the originals. They were mega, mega good. Uh, and there's actually some more trackside bits that we've had made which we haven't even had a chance to place yet. So they'll get placed in a service pack, I'm sure. But it's all about trying to get better trackside clutter made. And uh, it's you know ten years since some of it was made. Now it's well overdue and overall. So just try and breathe a little bit of extra life into our track sides. More bits of clutter so that you don't see the same, such as those old junction boxes. You don't just see those all the time anymore. You see other silver bits such as the uh, little box that you just passed there, which was originally for Amber Game. We found that, that was a very useful trackside cabinet actually. So we're now heading into the busier part of Nottingham, we're going into Carlton, so we're into the suburbs. And, uh, firstly we'll go under this old railway bridge which used to carry the line from Coit Yard I believe. Uh, not sure if it went up to Gedlin or where it went but it went up to the right there anyway. And uh, that used to cross on this bridge, these days obviously nothing on it but that's where it used to cross. As we then head through Carlton station. Um, 
And one of my favourite little viewpoints on the route is the town section at Carlton. So we uh, we decided to try and make this quite a, a nice little place to uh, put your virtual self, with the crossing and the town centre all together and everything, and the just the overall sort of view. That's Carlton Station. So again, it's a split platform look to it. You got the Crossing Social Club. And then you got the Fox and Hounds pub. And we now come to Neverfield Junction. So Neverfield Junction is where the line on the left uh, comes in, just here. From Grantham and Skegness. So we'll take a little detour. Because uh, I'm going to show you Neverfield Station, which is just on this curve. The route does go up a little bit further. It carries on up to Rectory Junction and the Isle Terminal up there. So people that want to make the scenario that went up there can. It is not as detailed as the main route and that must be stressed. The station itself is detailed and it's all detailed up to here. Beyond here, as you'll see, it's very much more basic. One reason is to take away the uh, the you know the FPS hit on that section. And the other is that this is more of a bonus section to the route. The idea is that if you're going to make a scenario, it starts here, really. If you're wanting to be going around and flying with a camera everywhere and stuff. But if you are in the cab and you want to go up to Vectory Junction and the oil terminal, then uh, fire away. You can see, as I say, there's not that much going on outside, but you don't see it when you're down here. That is the intention of this section. It's just an extra bit. That only took us a few hours to add on, so it was sensible to do. Uh, you can see it now. I can't go any further without going in editor. You do have the viaducts there. Uh, where the Cockreef Collie branch used to go off. And then you've got the oil terminal. Again, modelled quite basically. But it gives you that opportunity for those that want to do a scenario into there. And hopefully if we get an AP Class 60 EP at some point, it'll make for an interesting scenario. And that's sort of the reason it was done, is just to give people that little bit of extra in there while we could. So again, I'll come, as we go into Nottingham, I'll go into the outside view. Quite like the uh, feeling as we're going through these curves and stuff. One of my favourite sort of sections of the route is the line speed now drops to 50 and then it drops to 40 as we go through the curves into, into uh, Colic and then into Nottingham itself. So on the right in a second you'll find the Colic Cliffs. So that is the redstone, sort of sandstone look there you can see on the right. Very much like Dawlish, it's a very weird look to it. You would not expect to see that here, but it's there, so we've uh, made a recreation of it. Callum did those, and uh, certainly tells you that you know where you are, either that or you think you're in Dawlish, but you've got Colic Tower in front of us, I think that's Colic Woods Tower or something like that. Quite a notable landmark as you're coming into Nottingham, so we wanted to ensure that that was in the. Uh, in the route as well and then of course you've got uh, Collet Crossing Cottage as well and that's this bit on the right here as we make our way on the sort of little final section into Nottingham Got Eastcroft Depot coming up in a second. And there was all sorts of railway history we used to go on around here. You see the old bridges and stuff standing around. And of course you've got these newer footbridges placed as well. One of the old railway bridges just there. And this is where there was a signal box until a couple of years ago, and that shut the uh, last five years. It used to be just here by this footbridge, and nowadays that's obviously gone, so it's been uh, removed. I know Benedict did a good job here with like the Harley Davidson and everything. We've got the Harley Davidson dealership, and then we decided to have a K add a KFC into the uh, common library as well. 
Howard uh, Davidson isn't in common. He's not in common library. So it's a very specific sort of building. As we now come past Eastcroft Depot, so East Eastcroft's had a bit of love. We have put a bit more detail into this section than it was in uh, DNL. Diving on Leicester, a little bit of extra details gone on. As a part of the uh, update for this, you'll get London Road Station on the right hand side in all its glory. As we make our final arrival now into Nottingham, we go under the A60 road bridge uh, and then we'll be going into. Platform 4 at Nottingham, which is the one that these services generally use. Very busy scene here at Nottingham. We've got 170s, 158s, HSTs, 156. There's a 222 in front of us as well. to a stop in platform 4A and obviously if we were carrying on this video which we're not you would then carry on in this scenario and you would stop at Beeston, East Midlands Parkway, Loughborough, Barrow upon saw Silo Bicyston and Leicester so you'd get another you, you obviously when you buy the route you get an extra 27 miles there and it is a requirement of the route anyway um, so everyone should get that so I hope you enjoyed your look there at the Lincoln to Nottingham route. Remember, it's not a review, it's just a showcase of the whole thing. Uh, very much biased towards the thing as we've been working on it, so it is not a review. Um, you can pick it up now. It's 15 99 for the extension version, but remember that you must own Derby Nottingham to Leicester extension, and you must own Sheffield to Derby. You need to own those two to buy the extension version of this route at 15 99 If you don't want the extension and you don't want the other two, you can just buy it on its own, and that's 20 quid. And that should be available from the release of this video. It should be within two to three weeks. Not exactly sure on the date on it, but it'll be coming soonish. And uh, hope you've enjoyed the look at it there. Cheers very much for watching. Don't forget you can catch Tom. He's normally on Twitch. That's twitch.tv forward slash train sim TV underscore Tom. And uh, please do hit that subscribe button. We've got some cool videos coming up soon. Looking forward to having a look at the. Um, west of england mainline route from golden age development very soon and uh, there's a few other bits that i'm uh, keen to get a video on since this is my first one in like three months or something so excited to do that for you guys cheers for watching again as always thanks guys see you later bye